editing charts in stage right can be done on the chart view page to get here make sure this is the view you're seeing instead of pdf or charts just select charts so you can see this editing page on the left hand side you'll see this is a list of scenes and thumbnails of other charts that have already been created i can collapse this and see just the scenes and jump to any particular scene or click and open. These are all the thumbnails of all the charts created in this particular scene. Now a chart is basically a bird's eye view of the stage. We're looking at a bird's eye view, all the position of all the actors, all the scenery, all the props, so you can really track each person and each thing in each of those moments. In the bottom right hand corner you see chart 1.1. That means this is the first chart in the first scene. 1.2 would be the second chart in this first scene. You can change this to have your own manual method if you prefer that, but the default menu is that. Above that, this is a, a nickname you can give this. Let's say um, we're going to call this the opening position. Whatever you can remember, here's everybody in their opening position. This will be printed at the bottom of each page. The logo of the show will appear here, and the scene will, list, will be listed over here. <clears throat> Now here on the screen, you see icons of, of each of the performers, uh, and you can just basically drag them and go into their, each of their positions. Um, same, same is true of all the scenery. So to walk you around this page so you can see how to edit, up here I can, I can go into lock mode. If I go into lock mode, this means I can simply view and I can jump pretty quickly from one chart to the other. On your computer, you can either use these buttons here or your arrow keys on your keyboard. If you're on your iPad, one finger swipe will get you forward and backwards. Allows you to pretty quickly keep track of when you're in teaching mode where everybody is. Um, to unlock it, simply hit that button again. To add a new chart to your chart, simply hit this, this plus sign. And you can either add a blank chart which inserts a blank chart right after the one we have. So now chart 1.2 shows only the, the default stage. So on the permanent layer, when you created your production, this is what shows. These are, these are the things that don't move at all, the edge of the stage, the proscenium, all that. But if you're creating and you, and you want to uh, save some time, you can either do add a duplicate chart. This duplicates everything on that page. So now all you have to do is just move the few people who do move, and you don't have to replicate everybody where they are. It also duplicates this arrow and duplicates any text boxes. So if, if you want to be even quicker, it's a great idea to use next chart. Next chart will duplicate everything on that page, except for it won't uh, duplicate the arrow or the text box. Presumably, in every next chart, you're going to have new pathways. So it allows you to pretty quickly go and add the act and drag the actors to their next position on the stage. Now, notice that the actors are attached. There's a number floating over their head. As I move Brian stage right, you see the number changing. That's because they're connected to this number line down below. You can turn that off if that's not a tool that you want to achieve, but it allows you to really track all of the moving pieces. You can utilize the zoom tool by clicking here, see what level you want to zoom into. And if you're on your, on your uh, computer, hit control and drag to the portion of the stage that you want to look at really closely. If you're on your iPad, um, you know, two fingers will allow you to grab uh, whatever section of the stage that you want to zoom in. So you can zoom in or out depending on what you, what you want to see on the stage. Now, every chart is made of three different layers. There's the bottommost layer. That's the permanent layer I was talking about before. The edge of the stage, the proscenium, things that don't ever move. Or you can activate the scenic layer. That's where the scenery lives. Or you can activate the performer layer. So the reason these are separated is because, say, for example, I'm on the scenic layer and I want to grab the steps, I can do that without grabbing the actor by mistake. So the scenery lives on its own layer and the performers, now I can grab Angie and Leah without, without by mistake grabbing the stairs. I can't even grab the stairs when I'm on this mode. So everybody, everyone will either live on the scenic layer or on the performer layer. So you want to make sure one of those is activated so you can start working and, and doing your positions. The media button, I can add media here. If I want to add media, I hit the plus sign. Let's say I have a little tap combination I want to add here. 
and I simply hit the add, and that takes that saves that little link so pretty quickly I can just jump over to that link on YouTube or Vimeo. If I want to hide that, I hit that button again and it'll hide, but it'll stay there in case I need to find it quickly. You can add shapes to your charts by clicking the shape tool. From here, you can add squares, circles, all kinds of different shapes to your chart to edit those charts. Um, one favorite tool is the freehand tool. It allows you to go and go in and draw pathways of, of individuals. So, so say for example, I'm here and I want to draw uh, Leah's pathway. I can just simply click and drag and then save that icon. So that's now Leah's uh, pathway. Um, so you can you can easily do that by using the just hit freehand and then and use that tool. Now, if if you're like me, I'm not a great artist, and you may want to do a little something a little more, uh, something that looks a little better. You're going to hit this S curve, and this shows three points to begin with, but you can add more. So let's say I'm going to start here. I'm going to start that her pathway, and then simply I hold down the control key and I click anywhere on the page, and it will add another point. And I can even take those points and finesse them even further. So then now, and then I can delete any point. Let's say maybe I don't need that one. I turn it red, I hit delete point, and that deletes that. Let's say I like that, but I'm going to turn it blue to match Leah's color, and I hit save. So now that saves that as an object, so now that's Leah's pathway you can draw by using uh, the shape tool. Set pieces live in their in their set piece backstage. So these can there's a number of things that are just you know created there for you that come with the app. You can import some of your own. You know we've got beds and chairs and tables that you can certainly utilize. Um, let's say you know you're gonna add a couch to your set. Now remember it's a good idea to add your scenic stuff to the scenic layer. So it's a great idea to, to keep them separated there. Even though you could put them on the performer layer, it's better to keep them separated so that when Angie sits on the couch, there she is on the couch, and I can grab her and not the couch by mistake. So that's what the scenic layer is there for. Um, to add notes, I can add a text box by clicking here. A box shows up, and I can take that, and I can drag that around the page. I could also choose to have my notes down here in the bottom corner. So here I can type information, and that stays then off of the screen. It'll print next to my charts once I, uh, if I ever print a hard copy, or it'll always show down here. So that's what you can do with your notes. I can also hide them if I want to hide them. Um, performers show up in the green room. So the green room's over here, and if I say I need Vera on stage, I click on Vera. And Vera shows up center stage, and I can drag Vera wherever Vera needs to go. <clears throat> uh, this can float. If I hit float, it can float under there or send it to the dock or make it disappear. The undo button, the redo button, available. Now, this uh, the chart tools is something you'll be using quite a lot. Uh, to access it, you're just going to simply right-click or long hold. And it, up here, you can drag it to wherever is out of your way where you're working, and then pin it to that location. That'll keep it in that location if you're working and you want it to kind of stay out of the way of, of where you are working. So to talk about what the tools are that are on here, essentially, anything you select, say I select Helen, anything that can be done with Helen shows up here. I can cut, I can copy, delete, or clear. Let's say I want to copy and paste. Now, actually, I've created a, a duplicate of Helen there, and I can now cut Helen out, or I can delete Helen, Vera replaced Helen. Uh, so all of these things can be done. The clear button clears the selection. If I've selected several things, it clears whatever I have had selected at that time. Um, the rotation tool, um, if I enable it, I can use this little rotation tool to so, show what angle Vera is on or reset Vera back to zero and disable that. The align and distribute is a really useful tool. If I have several things um, selected, I can say, let me align all those three things set, set to the middle. 
oh, what if I do send them to the bottom? So you can actually align them pretty easily with you know, how you want them done. Do I want to distribute them vertically really evenly, horizontally evenly, so you can kind of get a nice spacing. That's what the align tool will do. I can also enable the snap to grid so that I can actually, so everybody's actually in their right spot in the grid. I can align everybody to the grid if I want to. I can disable it. I can enable it, all of those things. Um, another thing about the when you've selected more than one thing, say these three people, I can make them into a group. If I hit group, now this green box pulls up and I might say, oh, everyone keep that formation, but everybody just step up stage like that. So they've retained their formation. But, um, but I have been able to move them pretty quickly. Or I could take those same, now four people, make that into a group, and maybe they're now on a turntable, and now the turntable is going to take them around or back to zero. So, so these are all items that you can you know, utilize uh, quite a bit as you're doing this. Um, other things that may come in handy, so when things are overlapping, like see here, for example, Vera and Marcy, Vera is on top of Marcy, but let's say I want to switch that and make that the other way. What I can do is let me take Marcy and I'm going to edit right now. Uh, uh, Vera is on layer 12. Let's say I'm going to edit that and I'm going to send her to the bottom. Now Marcy's on top of them. So every everything that gets added just goes on a layer from you know top to bottom. So if things are overlapping and you need to see one more than the other, you can do the, the layer tool. Um, other things that come in handy uh, as you're doing, as you're dealing with set pieces, I can take the set piece, I can flip it horizontally or vertically. So I can use that tool, you know, to to help me out there. Um, when you're done with that, just simply hit the X and that X's you out of that tool. It's always available if you uh, long click or right click uh, on the screen. Uh, other things you can do, this link queue here, you can link to the pages in your script. So I can easily, easily jump back and forth between my script and the chart by using that link here. This button here allows me to copy the chart image. So if I click that, it just grabs that chart as its own image, puts it on my clipboard. I could drop it into a document. I could drop it into any other file. It's just saved as an, as an image that I can drop anywhere that I want. Um, any change that you make is auto-saved. Every 10 seconds, you see this timer goes down every 10 seconds. But if you want to beat the timer, hit the Save button. It'll save. That way you can save your work as you go. Printing PDFs can be done here. Uh, you can choose whether you want to do the whole production, the charts, and the PDF together, meaning the charts will appear on the left side of the page and the script will appear on the right side of the page, or just the charts, or just the PDF. Uh, you could do just the charts from this current scene or just this one current chart. Let's say I'm just going to do these charts here. Do I want to print the notes? Let's say yes, I do. And I click to print PDF. And now this will begin working. You'll see if I click that again down here below this timer and it's working out, it's going to get my PDF ready. When it is ready, I'll receive a notification saying that that is ready to be picked up. And I can then download it to my computer or print it or whatever I need to do. Uh, here I can check uh, who's collaborating on this me with me. If I want to ed edit that, I certainly can. Here, here you see my print job is now completed. So if I go, Back to the same place. Here it is. <clears throat> and I click it here. It'll begin downloading. And now I can save that to my computer. Um, settings can be, if I want to change the settings of my charts, I can do that here, which I'm going to do in another uh, lesson. But on the left-hand side, I want to just show you, you can reorganize, you can re reorder. Let's say I want to drag this one. I just simply click and drag to its new position. The number changes automatically. I can also delete charts. Let's say I want to click here. I can either move this to another scene. And when I do, then I simply choose which scene, let's say that scene, and it's going to move to the position right after chart 3.1. So then that moves it to that scene. I can also 
delete. If I want to just delete this one chart, I want to verify, yes, I do want to do that. So now that chart is gone. I can delete several things at the same time by holding down the command and click here. Now I can select several charts, move them at the same time, or delete them at the same time. Let's say I'm going to delete those two. I say yes, and now I hit done. Those deleted charts will be saved in here for 30 days. If I want to go back, remove charts, I can see which charts I've had in there. I can also see different versions of that chart that I might have had. And so I'll restore that chart. will get restored to the scene, and then I can go back out of here and, and hit that. Um, the other thing that is wonderful about charts is that you can link this to your script. So if I switch my view to the charts and PDF, on my left-hand side, these are my charts, and on the right is my script. Just simply drag a selection, say these three stanzas, and I drag this chart till it turns red and I let go. And now you see chart 1.1 is linked to this part of the script. So I might say these two lines apply to chart 1.2. And these three lines are chart 1.3. So now if I look just at my script alone, I can see those are those charts. And I can click on that link, and it will jump me right to that, that chart that I was looking at. So essentially, I can flip back and forth between working on my charts and working on my script.